This is Z-transform example number two. Find the Z-transform of an impulse response, its region of convergence, and pole zero diagram. Now in this problem we have a system with an impulse response, H of N, that's defined like this. We see that it is a non-zero value for a finite number of samples, and then it's zero after that. In this problem specifically, N is equal to eight. The key point though is that we have a finite length sequence. We need to tabulate the values of our impulse response for two values of b, and then visualize each version of the impulse response as a stem plot. A calculator or a computer works best there. Part b, we want the system function written out in closed form without a summation symbol. This is actually easiest if we proceed from the z-transform definition. That looks like this. The reason that it's easier is because with a finite length signal running from 0 to 7, in this case, that would be n minus 1, and with h of n replaced with b to the n, we see that with just a little bit of algebra, we can get this into the form of a geometric series. We have a closed form equation for the geometric series, and you can apply that to this result here. Finally, we want to plot the pole zero diagram h of the system function h of z for two cases of b. The denominator roots are the poles and the numerator roots are the zeros. All right, let's move on to the detailed solution. In part a, we want to tabulate and plot the impulse response for values b equals 0 0.8 and 1.25. n for this problem is eight. I'll set up my table, noting that after n equals 8, we have values of 0. Now 0.8 raised to the 0 power is just 1. That, of course, would be true for 1.25 raised to the 0 power as well. Here we would have 0 0.8 and 1.25, respectively, for those two values. Here's 0.8 squared there's 1.25 squared, and so forth to complete the table. We note that as n increases when b is less than 1, the values decrease. However, when b is greater than 1, we see the general trend is that the value raised to the nth power increases. Let's picture both of these as stem plots. Go ahead and plot this version first. This is b equals 0 0.8, a declining sequence. And then here we have an increasing sequence when b equals 1.25. And this is the result for part A. Well, let's continue with part B. We need to find the Z transform of H of N and its region of convergence. Let's begin with the Z transform definition. H of Z would be the sum from K equals minus infinity to positive infinity of H of N times Z to the minus N. Let's start making this more specific to the problem statement. H of n is b to the nth power. We start the sum at n equals 0, or k equals 0 as far as the summation index is concerned, and we end up at n minus 1. Since n is 8, that means we end up at 7. Let's write this in terms of a common exponent. And now we can recognize this as the form of a geometric series. Our closed form expression says we take the argument of the summation, raise it to the starting point of the summation, we subtract the argument of the summation, and raise that to the upper limit of the summation plus 1. That would be 7 plus 1. 
we divide by the argument, or rather we divide by one minus the argument. This would be one, and this would be b to the eighth times z inverse to the eighth power. The problem statement asked us to get the h of z into the form of z instead of z inverse, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by z to the eighth. z to the eighth will cancel the z inverse to the eighth. Here we have z to the eighth. And this will give us b times z to the seventh. Let me factor out z to the seventh. And this looks like a good form. This would be h of z. As far as the region of convergence is concerned, everything is fine provided we do not allow z to be equal to zero. So we'll write that as z not equal to zero. This is the result for part b. All right, let's move on to the third part. This is part c. We want to find the pole zero diagram of h of z. We want to do so for n equals eight and two values of b. Well, we can make use of the h of z that we found from part b. And that looks like this. First, we can identify a pole right here. When z equals b, this expression right here evaluates to b minus b, and that's zero. That would give us a zero in the denominator, and that's a pole. Here we have a seventh order pole at the origin. Finally, we need to find all the places where the numerator goes to zero. We begin by setting the numerator to zero, and then we'll work on finding its roots. Let's bring the b to the eighth to the other side. And then take the eighth root of both sides of the equation to isolate z. That would be b to the eighth raised to the one eighth power. I'm going to bring the b coefficient out front and then distributing across we can write this as b times 1 to the 1 8th power. This we recognize as the nth roots of unity. We then have eight roots which have the form e to the j 2 pi divided by k. That is we take the single revolution of two pi radians and chop it up into eight equal wedges, if you will, n equals eight. You can picture that quickly to see what that looks like in the complex plane. K is running from zero to n minus one, or seven in this case. And again, in the complex plane, those eight roots are arranged around the unit circle they're equally spaced. Now we are multiplying that by the value b. That tells us that we have eight zeros arranged on a circle whose radius is b. All right, let's see this a little bit bigger and also get the poles on there. Here we have our seventh order pole at the origin. Indicate that with parentheses seven. We have a pole at z equals b. For the first case of b being 0.8, that would be located right here. Then we have eight zeros arranged on this circle of radius b. Note that we have a pole zero cancellation right here, so both of those are going to disappear. That would be our pole zero diagram for b equals 0.8. I'll put down the version for b equals 1.25 for comparison. Everything is more or less the same, except the pole now is out here at 1.25, and the radius of the circle for the eight zeros is out here at 1.25 as well. We also have that same pole zero cancellation that we had earlier, so I'll wipe that one out. 
and then let's get the remaining seven zeros. And this would be the picture for B equals 1.25. And then this is really both of the results for part C. And that takes care of this example.